Once upon a time, Sampdoria were the best team in Italy and one of the best teams in Europe. They may not be the force they once was nowadays, but we're going to see if we can rebuild them and bring back some of their former glory. Hello everyone and welcome to part one of Rebuilding Sampdoria, where I'm going to attempt to take Sampdoria back to the glory days of the late 1980s and early 1990s. Before we get going in this video, I'd just like to ask you to leave a like, comment below, let us know where, where you think we're finished, how long it's going to take us to get back into Europe or win a cup or something like that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, click the notification bell to know when new videos are going to be released. And tell all your friends, um, help to help me to build the channel. Right, for those of you who don't know, Sampdoria used to be one of the best teams in Europe. They were, at one stage, the best team in Italy. 1986 was when it all started to improve for Sampdoria. The former Yugoslavian international, Vujadin Boskov, took over as their manager. He had built up a nice reputation and he had played for Sampdoria back in the early 1960s. He took charge in 1986 and decided that his philosophy was going to be to build a team around young Italian players with the odd... It, the odd talented overseas player thrown in for good measure. And then players such as Gianluca Viali, Roberto Mancini, yet Gianluca Pagliuca, Attilio Lombardo, and the experienced Brazilian Toninho Cerezo, Cerezo, something like that. They all played a major part in turning Sampdoria into one of the best teams in Europe. Uh, they won back-to-back -back Italian Cups in 87, 88 and 88, 89. They won the Cup Winners' Cup, the old European Cup Winners' Cup. For those who don't remember, there used to be different competitions to what there are now. Instead of the Champions League, UEFA Cup, Europa League or whatever, there used to be European Cup, UEFA Cup, Cup Winners' Cup. And the winner of each cup in each country, so the FA Cup, the Italian Cup, Spanish Cup, whatever, they would play in that and it was just a knockout tournament. Sampdoria won that in 89-90. And then they won their first and only Serie A title, Serie A title, in 1990-91. In the first season after Italian 90 had been held, the World Cup Italian 90, and when the Italian league was undoubtedly the best league in the world. It had the best players, the best teams. Um, and then they reached the European Cup final in 1992, where Johan Cruyff's Barcelona side beat them after extra time. Since then, it's all gone a little bit downhill. Viali left. I think he went and joined Juventus. Boskov ended his reign as manager. And it all started to go downhill a little bit. Since, I think, 1994 was the last time they finished third. Um... Yeah, since 1994, they had a bit of an up and down time. They've been a bit of a yo-yo club. They've dropped down to the second tier in Italian football, came back up again, and they haven't really done much. So what we're going to try and do in this, in this series is to lower the average age of the squad because they've got a bit of an ageing squad, I think. Um... And we're going to look to bring in young Italian players. I mean, back back when Boscov was in charge, they didn't have a choice because there was a limit on the number of overseas players. But we're going to look to build a team of young Italian players for the future as well. Bring in a couple of decent overseas players if needs be. And the aim of the series is to rebuild Sampdoria. We're not so much looking at winning the Italian league because they've only ever won it once so we can't say that they're a like a continuous threat at the top of the table but I would consider this series to be a success if we can maybe win a cup and get them back into Europe and in my eyes it should be doable Right, um, I did actually do a little bit of research before starting this series. I looked at the Sampdoria squad, looked at what I thought we needed changing, stuff like that. 
And before I had the chance to actually record the first episode, the winter update has hit. So I'm not going to go back to this, like the original start of the game and use the squads when the game was first released. I'm going to use the winter update. So my research is null and void. So I'm going to be looking at the squad and the vision and stuff like that for the first time now, the same as you're going to see it. So if we look firstly at the squad, let's sort by age because I do know that they've got quite a few older players. Um, if we scroll up there, Cagliarella is 38. Giovinco and Candreva are 34. Caputo and Rincon both 33. Yoshida's 32. Ravaglia's 32. Ekdal is 31. And then we've got quite a lot of players in their eight, their, their eight, their late 20s, 28 and 29. The youngest player at the squad, or in the first team squad, is Christopher Askildson, who's 20. Mikhail Damsgaard is 21. And he... He's a very, very good player. Um, very good player. Although he's a wide player, and I wasn't thinking about using wide players, but I might have to think again. Ronaldo Vieira, 23. Young English defensive midfielder. They're all out on loan. So... A squad depth are just a normal 442. If we were just looking at a normal 442, goalkeeper's only a three star, so I'm not going to concentrate too much on the star rating. I think mean, three star is just is about good enough to do well. Um, I'm just going to look at depth really, um, how we can look to make the most of what we've got and what we need to bring in. So We've got three three-star right backs. Possibly need to bring in another left back. Maybe one really quality centre back. I'm more likely though to play something like that, maybe. Four three three with a DM. Maybe the wide four three three. Where's that gone? I don't know where the four three three's. I don't know if I'm going blind, but I don't know where the four three three wide has gone. Oh, there, it's there. I was going blind. Um, so that probably look at playing something along those lines to begin with and see how we go. It's a bit alarming that Cragliarella is... I'm probably saying that completely wrong, Cragliarella. There's, I'm probably going to get Italians screaming at me if they see this. But he's 38 years old. Um, all right, he's got great natural fitness and he's still got really good stats. But having a 38-year-old as your main striker is probably not going to take you very far. Look, Kandreva and Damsgaard. Uh, see, Kandreva is the best winger and the best midfielder. So we may need to bring in a couple of players for those positions. But then again, we've got Damsgaard on the, over there who can cover. Decent midfield back up. So we have got a decent, decent, a decent squad. Um, just looking at inbox. Let's look at the club vision and the expectations. They want us to play entertaining football. They want us to sign players from the lower levels of the domestic game. They want us to break even in the transfer market and to work within our wage budget, which I'll have a look at in a minute to see how much we've got. The alarming bit, considering our Sampdoria are playing in real life, um, I think they're sort of 
14th, 15th or something in real life. They want us to qualify for the Europa League, which, hmm, yeah, all right. So the pressure's on straight away. Um, pressure's on, ladies and gents. They want us to reach third round of the Cup, the Copa Italia, and then continue qualifying for the Europa League all the way down. So I said rebuilding Sampdoria would mean maybe winning a cup and getting her back into Europe. They want me to do it in a season. So this could be a one season save. This could be one season. One and done, as they say. Because if I don't qualify for the Europa League, I might get the sack. And if I get the tic tac and I end up down the road, I ain't gonna have a chance to achieve what I want to. Whereas, if I do qualify for Europe in the first season, I've basically achieved what I said I was going to achieve. So I'll make the decision as we go along and see how, see how it plays out, but this could be a one season save. Um, our pre-season preparation. Where are we headed? We're going to, oh, Aosta in Italy. Aosta, Aosta? Again, my pronunciation is awful. I can just about speak English properly. Um, so there's a nice training camp in Italy. I'm not going abroad or anything. Got quite a few pre-season fixtures lined up already. Uh, the finances, if we look at our finances, a transfer budget of 7.695 million and a wage budget of £751,000 a week. Although, by the looks of it, we don't have anything left in that. We look over, we've got £31,000 of our wage budget left. 7.69 million on the transfer budget. So, yeah, there's not a great deal of money available. Um, if we look at how much players are earning, was that? Yeah, that was it. So our highest earner is Stefano Sensi, who is on loan. He's earning sixty-one thousand a week. Andrea Conti is earning sixty-one thousand a week, and then we've got. So if we look at how much wage budget we've got available and what the players are earning, we can sort of bring in someone around this sort of this region. Or maybe possibly look to sell. I mean what what assets do we have? Mikhail Damsgaard is basically our only asset, and I don't really want to look to sell him. He's only young. Um make up a little bit of money. So it looks like I might be stuck with what we've got here, which may not be a good thing. It may be. Um, I'm going to go and sort out a tactical direction, get through pre-season, and see how we're going. I'm also going to close the curtain because the sun's just started beaming through, and I don't know if you can even see my face. But, yeah, I'll be back for the beginning of the season. It may have only been against lower league opposition, and it was a cup game, but we've started our season with a 4-0 win over Paul Danone. Uh, Paul Danone, again, pronunciation is not going to be my strong suit in this, in this series. 4-0 uh, win at home against the Syria B side in the first round of the cup. 2.31 on the XG, 8 shots on target, six, uh, yeah, 16 shots overall. Uh, Kane drove a penalty, open the scoring. Caputo added a second. Craig Arella came off the bench to score a third. And then Kane Draver finished it all off in stoppage time. Solid performance, direct counter-attack. They had the most of the possession, which slightly worrying, but we defended it well and took our chances when we got them. Um, the season starts against Torino away from home and if we just have a little look in at 
the Serie A season preview. We are predicted to finish around about 12th. We're 300 to 1 for the title. So I need to, because they want us to qualify for Europe, I need to try and either win the cup or finish up here somewhere. I'm not sure exactly what um, position will get us through. A couple of transfers before we move on to the first game. Outgoings first. Um, there's obviously loads of loads of signings that were made and uh, ins and outs and stuff before in actual real life. Um, Ronaldo Vieira has gone to Hanover for 1.1 million. We weren't going to play. Um, he's two star, two, two only about two and a half star potential. And Maya Yoshida has gone to Al Ali. Um, he was one of our non-EU players. He wasn't even our best option in his position. He's 32 years old. So I thought I'll take take the £1.4 million for him, get him off the wage bill and try and bring in some someone else. Uh, Christopher Askildson has also gone to Bodo on loan. And the incomings, we've brought in a new goalkeeper. I said I needed a new goalkeeper. Alessio Cragno has come in from Cagliari. Cagliari, Cagliari. 34 appearances for them last season. Comes in for £6 million and will go straight in as my first choice goalkeeper. And Filippo Bandinelli has come in from Empoli. Um, he's a box to box midfielder. He's only come in as a squad player. But he's probably not going to play much for us. But he's there as cover. Obviously, Candreva's playing over on the right. So Sensi and Fallsby or Torsby are in the middle. Um, so then one of those will play defensive midfielder and Bandenel is there as the backup. And that brings us to the start of the season. So I'm going to get this game out of the way. Well, not get it out of the way. I'm going to do... I'll record it and then show a few little highlights of the game. I'm not going to do full live comms for this. Now, the way this series is going to work is a little bit different to the other series that I did, the Maidstone one. I'm not going to come back, do two games on live comms, this, that and the other. I'm going to play a massive chunk of the season, record the bigger games, and then show highlights of what's happened. So that way, we get through the season a bit quicker. It makes the episodes a little bit more interesting to watch. And, yeah, like I said, it gets me through the seasons quicker. So, let's go and play a game of football, shall we? The team for our first game of the season. Cragno, Ferrari, Magnani, Colli, Elgello, Rincon, Torsby, Sensi, Candreva, Damsgaard and Caputo. And we are underway for the first game of the season. Speed this up a little bit. And hopefully we'll get off to a nice good start here, but that ball has gone straight to the goalkeeper. Gello, Damsgaard, Sensi. Damsgaard, can he get the ball across here? Plays it back. Argello puts it in. Caputo. 1-0. Second goal of the season. Francesco Caputo. And we are 1-0 up against Torino on the opening day of the league season. And we will have some of that. Damsgaard played it back. Argello with a cross in. Caputo at the near post. And that, ladies and gents, is 1-0. And that is half time, and we are 1 0 up, despite the fact we've only had one shot on goal. Our XG is only 0.22. We've had more possession, but we're not playing particularly well. 
and come in from the break with a 1-0 lead. Playing some nice football here. Kandreva finds Damsgaard and Damsgaard 2-0. It looks like this is going to be checked. The Torino players are surrounding the referee. VAR gets involved and the goal stands. The goal stands. Torsby, Kandreva held it there. Lovely little pass. Damsgaard broke through the defence and slots it home. And that is 2-0. The tight offside was well, nowhere near offside. I don't even know what the call was for there. Literally three players keeping him on side. And we've had two shots on goal and we're 2-0 up. And Singo puts it in and Andrea Bellotti has headed home. I don't know how we allowed him to get so close, to be fair. Singo there shouldn't have got the cross in, and Bellotti was unmarked. We just sort of stood there and watched him, really, didn't we? That's not good. There's still 26 minutes left. Again, Singo on the right, and oh, what has he done? I've just signed him because I thought he was going to be a really good goalkeeper. Stupid. But again, this left-hand side, we've allowed Singo to... I don't know what that goalkeeper was doing there at all. And that's full-time. Full-time, 2-2 at home to Torino. I'm not happy with the performance, really. Two shots on goal at the entire game. All right, we scored them both, but... When you're conceding 12 shots, if that been if that managed to hit the target a bit better, that wouldn't have been a very good result. But as it stands, we got a draw out of it. So two-two draw to start the season. Can't really argue with that. Um as I said before, this series is going to run a little bit different to the last one. I'm going to play a massive chunk of the season now. I will record some of the games, commentary on some of the games, and show you bits and pieces of highlights. Maybe do a live comms sort of mid-season, something like that. Um, and we'll get through this first season as quick as we possibly can. Hopefully, it isn't only a one-and-done season, a one-and-done series. Um, but if it is, it might only end up being a few episodes of the series. But thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and I will see you again very, very soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.